Welcome back general chemistry class to chapter 18 titled chemical thermodynamics and today we're going to be focusing on 18.1 uh, entropy and spontaneity. So we are going to first kind of go back and talk about the first law of thermodynamics first but we're really going to get into what is the second law? What in the world is entropy? How do we define entropy for a reaction or a system? And how do we bring that into the talk about spontaneous reactions? We're going to introduce spontaneous reactions, but we're really going to focus on entropy mostly in this first section. So first law, I've written a couple things down to begin with. And remember the first law of thermodynamics is that energy is not, can't be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred. So transferred or transformed between two different types of energy. And that's what we looked at a lot in chapter uh, 10.4 and also 12.3. So we introduce this concept of enthalpy, the energy of the system. This is like the heat transfer between something. And we define things as either exothermic or endothermic. And remember, this was the, we were really the, uh, the position of the system. Did the system lose heat or did the system gain energy? If we want to look at a system or process, we can even just simplify this and think about water going from solid to liquid. And if this is our system, you know, our block of ice is the system. To get from solid to liquid, does it gain energy or does it release energy? It has to gain energy plus heat to go to liquid. So we said overall the system has a positive change in heat, change in enthalpy. So that would be an endothermic process. So we're, we're trying to think of these, these laws from the system's point of view for the time being. So with that in mind, let's move on to the second law of thermodynamics in the context of this chapter here. So second law says, a spontaneous process will always result in an overall increase in entropy, or S, of the universe. So second law has to do with randomness and spontaneity. We're going to focus more on the randomness first before we focus on spontaneity. So let's kind of define entropy and talk about entropy for a second. So entropy essentially is the degree of randomness in the universe. Trying to find my correct notes here. Entropy. Degree of disorder or randomness. Randomness. And this is the lower energy state. So like high order, think like a crystalline solid equals low, whoops, that is the M, low entropy. So if you have something really kind of tightly bound, high order, that's low energy, low entropy. And this is, you know, a lot of stored energy, high energy. The universe likes to go down to lower energies naturally. So they're going to fall towards the most randomness thing possible because that's the lowest energy state. I use this idea in my classroom a lot. If you have your room and you have a bookshelf and you've got a closet and you've got amazing drawings in your, you've got clothes hangers and you've got shirts hung up in here, right? It's nice and ordered. You've got books over here. Nice and ordered. This is a highly, let's try to get one more shirt in there, huh? High order. high order, low entropy, higher energy state. And what happens naturally five days later? Without you really realizing it, uh, you've got 
books falling over. You've got books on the floor. Your closet basically looks like this. That's closet. I mean, who knows what happened in there? You've got clothes all over the floor. Or for me, it's on the back of chairs because apparently a chair is just what I use as a closet. It's pretty pathetic. So this is high entropy. That's the natural order of things. And that's lower energy state now. And oh boy. You need energy. You need energy to go back the other way. To go from a low order to a high order. To physically pick up all this junk, hang it up, physically pick up all these books, put it up. I'm expending energy to go this way. This way, it's a lot easier. So that's what I mean by entropy. So let's look at some actual chemical processes. Oh, I already did this example. I was practicing. Goodbye, all of you, and you, and you. Here we go. Here we go. So that's entropy. And we're going to connect this back to spontane spontaneous processes in a little bit. But let's consider entropy again. Just like delta H of systems, reactions, we can predict delta S. So change in entropy, positive or negative symbol. So let's think about that for some of the processes the book puts out. Um, let's look at process number one here. So a phase change from Let's go from an H2O solid to a liquid. We talked about this a little bit before. Is this a positive delta S, as in overall, or am I increasing the randomness, or am I decreasing the randomness of the system? Again, this is just the system's perspective. We're defining our system as the water. So from going from solid water to liquid water, this is more random. There's more disorder involved in a liquid system than a solid system. So anytime you go from a solid to a liquid, from the system's perspective, you have an increase in your entropy. Going back the other way, you would have a negative delta S value. Second thing that the book brings up is, let's say you've got solid CO2 going all the way to the gas phase. So this is, you know, you have a bucket of dry ice and it's going all the way from solid to gas. So again, this is more random, much more random now. Even more disorder in the gas phase than the liquid phase. So we would expect from the system's point of view, this has a positive entropy value, increasing the disorder from the system's perspective. Uh, number three, let's say we take NaCl and we plunk it into some water. Now we've got NaCl aqueous. Uh, and essentially, remember what these are? These are a yeah. This is more disorder now too. We took a highly crystalline solid broke it apart, and we have now sodium plus and chlorine plus. From the sodium chloride's perspective, this system is now more disordered as an aqueous system. So this is also positive delta S. Think of the other way. If I let this slowly evaporate and these aqueous compounds form solids again, slowly forming crystalline solids, you'd have, from the system's perspective, a negative delta S sign. Um, four, increase in temp. Let's say you just increase the temp of NaCl aqueous. Let's say you have this on a hot plate. And 
uh, increase the temperature? What's going to happen to the randomness of the system? This is the system before, and then afterward it's warm. Well, now we're increasing the kinetic energy of any, everything in the system. So things are moving faster. So this is also a positive delta S. So increasing the temperature within a phase, like a gas phase or a solid phase or a liquid phase, you are going to also increase the entropy of that system. And finally, if you have an increase in number of gas particles, oh, whoops, sorry about that. That's also a positive delta S. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have, let's see, I'm gonna get one from the book here. Well, what if you have something like this? What do you have some sort of four gas particles and it's a reaction and you're going down to two of these plus one of these. So I had four over here, four moles, and only three moles over here. Oh, actually, that'd be the opposite. I'm sorry. Let's turn. Let's change this around. This would be a negative delta S. Let's think it from the opposite perspective. If I have two of these gas particles combining with three, but I'm forming four moles of a new compound. So three moles to four moles. That would be a positive delta S. I have more than I started with. So increasing the number of moles is always going to give me a positive delta S as well. Let's think about some examples of some real compounds now. Thinking about delta S of the system. Notice I haven't been talking about spontaneous reactions yet. I'm really just focusing on getting us better at predicting entropy values. It's going to be important in the future. We haven't talked about spontaneous reactions really at all yet. We just know from up here, a spontaneous process will always result in overall increase in entropy. But in the universe, we're talking about entropy of the system right now. So we're going to look at this in the future, delta S of the universe, not just the system. But for now, we're just looking at entropy of the system. So let's look at a system such as, okay, let's predict delta S positive or negative for, let's say this process. Um, we'll look at this one first, we'll do another one. So let's say two potassium chlorate and this is a decomposition reaction. So we had two moles of that going to two moles of KCl plus three moles of oxygen. And is this balanced? Yeah, we have two Ks, two Ks, two Cls, two Cls, six oxygens, two times three, six oxygens. So yeah, the, it's a, the balance is the same. The atom balance is the same. But what about the moles? We had two moles over here. Now we have two plus three, five moles. Two to five, that's an increase in the number of moles of gas. So these are all gases, even though my handwriting, except that one, sorry. This is a solid. Oh, these aren't gas, I'm sorry, this is a new solid. We're just looking at total moles in general. So if you have an increase of moles, you're going to get an increase in entropy. What about the phases though? We had a solid going to a solid. Okay, that's that's basically an even um, amount of entropy. There's no, really no change here in terms of phases, but we have gas as well now. So we went from solid to solid plus a gas. So just by looking at phase changes, we have more entropy as well. So this is kind of a double whammy here. We've got a lot of positive entropy, entropy for this reaction. What about, let's take some solid sodium, highly reactive metal, plus chlorine gas, highly reactive and toxic gas to produce 
delicious table salt. Delicious, delicious table salt. And think about the entropy change here. So again, we're looking for the number of moles and we're considering phase changes. So just considering number of moles, we had two plus one, three moles on the left going to two. So this got more, uh, less number of moles. So that's a negative delta S value for that. There's less randomness now. And phases, we had a solid plus a gas going to just a solid. So we lost our gas phase too. So that's also less randomness. So both of those contribute to an overall negative delta S value for this for the system. So that's just a little introduction to how we can predict the spontaneity values of the system. Let's go back to the second law. I'm going to grab this out of here. Ooh, very carefully. Copy, please. Paste. Okay, this I'm going to get out of here for now. A little cleanup, cleanup on aisle. Oh, that's not working. What in the world? Does it think this is a picture? Well, I don't know what's going on with that. That's okay. Second law of thermodynamics says a spontaneous process will always result in an overall increase in entropy of the universe. So I need to remind us that what this means practically, and this is kind of from section 18.3, is that delta S of the universe has to be positive. Oh, sure, now it disappears. So that means we have been studying delta S of system. But what we need to no, is the delta S of the surroundings as well. So if something's spontaneous, that means it's going to occur under the set of conditions shown. And let's look at two sets of conditions for a process. So if we have ice going to liquid, Is this spontaneous? Well, uh, what's the delta S of system? Just the sign. Well, the delta S of the system, anytime you have a solid to liquid, is going to be positive. But what about the delta S of the universe? Let's look at two different, um, let's look at temperature. Let's say we're in Arizona versus the North Pole. Ice going to liquid. Which of these is spontaneous? Uh, this system, th or this version, this situation is spontaneous. If I drop a piece of ice in the middle of summer in Arizona, this is a spontaneous process. In the North Pole, this is a not this is non-spontaneous process. Spontaneous doesn't mean fast. Remember that too. Spontaneous just means it will happen. Whoops. So this will happen, and it's I don't know a little bit fast. This is not only not spontaneous; it'll never happen. It's not just slow; it just will never ever happen. So this is what we mean by delta S of the universe has to be positive. So in the next sections, we are going to study more how we can actually predict whether something will actually be spontaneous. But the second law says that the universe has to overall increase in entropy. And that de depends on our conditions here. So really 18.1 is introducing spontaneity 
but really focusing on uh, predicting the sign of delta s from reactions and equations. And the last section of this chapter talks about the this equation. We'll, we'll just kind of look at that. I'm leaving that out of test material, but it's good to bring up now because we're going to use this in the next section a little bit. Hold on, I'm finding that in our book. Okay, so spontaneity, entropy, sorry, not spontaneity, S is entropy, S, is equivalent to a constant times the natural log of W. W are the energetically equivalent rearrangements or arrangements of of the system so we call these microstates and this goes up when you increase the number of particles of gas increase the number of moles increase the number of arrangements that they can make the spont the uh, entropy is equivalent to that so the higher this number is the higher the amount of uh, this will be so the it's kind of difficult to determine the amount of arrangements but we're not really going to use this equation a lot in our course we are going to consider though next time when w equals one if W only has exactly one arrangement, then the natural log of one equals zero. So that means S equals zero. This is a very theoretical point. This is at absolute zero temperature when there's literally no movement. So we're gonna use this to define something in the next section, but just know that this is an equation that's used to kind of describe entropy in terms of arrangements of atoms. You can read a little bit about this more yourself in the book, but I'm not going to have a lot of problems using this uh, equation. So that is really 18.1. And I will see you on the other side at 18.2.